Hi, Kobe. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so why don't we get started with you telling me a little bit about your caregiving experience? Uh, sure. Yeah, no problem. So um, my mother had a stroke in 2019. And so I had to take care of her kind of uh, when I came back from uh, school a couple months later for winter break. And I would say it was a rather tough experience because she's a type of person where it's just like, I can do everything myself. And so like anytime that you would like offer help, she would just kind of like refuse it. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like a very, she was a very, very negative person. Like during that, that stage, I mean, she's a lot better now, but like during like the peak when she was like fresh out of the hospital or like even like a couple months, like over winter break, she was incredibly like negative. She would just complain about like literally like everything. And like, I mean, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty tough trying to, uh, I guess, stay positive during that whole experience. I would say, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you're trying to help her out and you've like taken on this whole new role, like taking care of her. And I'm sure it's frustrating if you're not getting like the appreciation you were hoping for. Um, yeah, I would say, but um, I guess uh, bouncing off of that, it was just, uh, she didn't really like, you know how like people in like stroke rehab have to go through like rehab of like physical, physical and like, being able to like write again like she was a she like didn't really do anything she just didn't really want help from like therapists or like because she went to like appointments in the city I think like twice a week Mm -hmm. it was just like yeah they weren't helping me so I kind of just stopped and so Um, I mean she didn't really like get better (laughs) in that sense so um so then she was complaining. I was like, oh, why aren't, why aren't I getting any better? I'm just like, well, because you stopped the physical therapy. Like, how are you, how do you expect to get better when like you're not even doing your physical therapy at all? So mm-hmm. she would just like shift the blame on everything else but herself, even though she was like completely responsible for that, for all, all that. Yeah, I'm sure that was hard to watch. I mean, like, obviously you want your mom to get better. So I'm sure that was not very easy to see her like, kind of giving up like that yeah I'd say but uh things are better now so you know don't need to dwell on the past you know just got to keep moving forward to the future you know right um what would you say some of your worries were during that time or even now um I guess my biggest worry was that either like being away from school because obviously I would have to go back to school after winter break and you know, um, something would like happen at home and like no one was there to help her. Mm -hmm. So it would be like, what, like how, what would happen if that were to happen? Thankfully that hasn't happened, but I would say that was definitely my biggest worry is that no one will be there to help her like in like drastic, if she like drastically needed it at a point in time. Right. Yeah, that, I can imagine that was hard too. I mean, you're worried about like school and how you're going to continue your education. And then on top of that, you're worried about like your mom and how she's like, if she's going to be okay and what she might need. So I can imagine that was not helping with your stress. Oh yeah, definitely. (laughs) That was definitely a stressful time. I I do say so myself. Yeah, (laughs) I can imagine. Um, I know you've touched on this a little bit, but what were some of your challenges, even if it's stuff you've already mentioned? Um, I guess I probably like named all of them, but I guess to reiterate, I guess like the biggest challenge that I had to face was being able to stay positive because she was just like, I would say this like a massive negative ball of energy. So it was kind of hard, like anytime that we would have like guests over and people would be like oh how are you doing and she was like I'm, I'm in fucking hell right now I'm just like okay mm-hmm. so it's definitely it's definitely hard to like be positive around her and trying to keep a uh, company kind of positive around her when she was just that that negative ball of energy in the room like that so uh I would say that's probably definitely one of my biggest challenges Kobe I really love how you 
I mean, kept trying to stay positive. I love how you like didn't just give in to that negative energy and you really tried to, I mean, stay positive for yourself and for your mom. Cause I know that was obviously not an easy thing to do if you're all, always around like that negativity. So I really like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you say that this has affected your academic experience? I know you touched on this a little bit, but if there was anything. Um, I, I actually wouldn't say that just um, that it really affected my academic experience at all because uh, thankfully this whole like kind of recovery thing was during like the worst of uh, COVID. So I didn't really need to, it didn't really get in the way of any of my classes or my schoolwork, you know, it was kind of just like worry about, <clears throat> excuse me, two, uh, like two different things, just schoolwork and my mother, but, you know, you would have to, you know, organize stuff on, you know, do one thing at a time. And so uh, thankfully it didn't really affect it at all, you know, so uh, still in a good standings academically. Good, good. If there's, one good thing that came out of COVID, I'm glad it was this for you, that this like didn't, oh, yeah. yeah, make your experience worse. Um, and then the last question I have for you is, what type of resources would have been helpful from the university either at that time or even now, while you're like taking care of your mom? Um, I wouldn't. I would say that's kind of hard because I didn't really like reach out to like the university or because I can't really imagine that uh, any like college student would be having a stroke but who knows but um I don't I feel like in my case I feel like there's not really much you can do I feel like I mean obviously if something did come up and that I would have to um you know I'd have to email my professor be like hey I can't I can't do this I gotta go home for such and such family matters mm -hmm. I feel like it's really up to them as a human being whether to like excuse me for I guess if that reason is good enough but I guess if we're really like want to tie the university into it you just have to find professors who like really care about their students and it's not just like here's a bunch of school work to go and do your own thing so it's just basically finding kind of professors who can uh, sympathize and empathize with mm -hmm. uh, students in a way. Yeah, I think that's, a, I mean, great feedback, like having support from your prof professors when you need it. So that's like a great feedback. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's all I had for you. Thank you for joining me and telling me your experience today. Yeah, no problem. I'm uh, glad to help you out.